Uh, I have a guest, a special guest today, Fatih, here, and uh, he's going to give us a masterclass about uh, a topic that I think it's very relevant for a lot of us now that we are kind of isolated and feel like a little lonely. And so there is definitely a big percentage that a lot of you guys that can relate that masturbation can be an easy escape or something that it's so easy to just uh, feel good for a while. So I think this is definitely a very relevant topic. And I think Fatih here can really enlighten us about this because he has a lot of experience. So yeah, man, uh, I guess that you can pinpoint uh, Fatih now, uh, Royal, and we can, uh, yeah, take it away, bro. All right. Thanks, Diogo, for the invitation. What I have asked you a quick question. When you put, uh, put this title, The Point of No Return, are you aware that it's used in sexuality as well? Hmm. Can you yeah. get my question? That's interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you mean like there is a I mean, moment that you cannot... Uh... Yeah, there's some delay, I think, so I'll just keep forward. Um, like the interesting thing is uh, when I talk about this, what is Tantra, like what is sexual Tantra, how to do it and all that, the point of no return is a major concept that I use and probably I would talk about that too. And when I saw your presentation or step one is point of no return, I said, oh, interesting. Diogo is going to start talking about that. Ah, that wasn't planned. No. You know, like, <laughs> oh, let's see what he knows about it. Ah, that's fun. You know, like, and then, you know, like something comes. No, so, he's, a, he's a visionary. <laughs> he's a visionary. All right. So, uh, hey, guys, I'm uh, here as a little bit elder brother, I think. Uh, I'm 43 years old. Uh, studied uh, tantric yoga and tantric sexuality for five years on a, a tropical island in Thailand. And before and after that, I had some background and education into the tantra, sexuality, yoga, spirituality, meditation, you know, like all this thing is in my, like this whole field is uh, something that I'm working towards for 20 years. This doesn't make me an expert. This doesn't make me a guru or master. Um, I like the Japanese word sensei, which means I'm just one step further, okay? One step ahead. Uh, it translates as teacher. Even teacher is a little bit uh, too much. But I can teach you a lot of stuff for sure. So, um, yeah. Why, why Tantra? Why, why is it interesting? Why is it ever, ever useful? Um, it's very deeply traditional. And... Um, it's very rich. They're all kind of different techniques, methodologies, and it embraces everything. So, and it also brings together spirituality and sexuality. Other than that, you see when you look at the society, usually you see a split. Uh, either there's a lot of sexuality, but no spirituality or not so much, or a lot of spirituality, but sexuality is suppressed a lot. So you see in some of these Eastern cultures, like Taoists of China also, like to embrace the both, uh, but tantric do it in a little, little bit different way. So today we know both traditions, we know even more traditions, so we can embrace them all. We can embrace the modern science, breathwork, meditation, biohacking, uh, Gaines Wave, Phoenix, private gym, you name it, you know, like, so there's abundance of knowledge and information and techniques, and it can be super helpful. And I'm experimenting with these techniques and approaches for like very, very long time. So I would like to share so, some core of these teachings uh, in this time that is given to me tonight. And one of the fundamental key aspects of my um, daily life or my daily life practice is sperm retention, is sper sperm economy, you know, like, um, and this is one of the ideas that first came to me uh, in a book of Mantak Chia, Cultivating Male Sexual Power. I read this book like 20 years ago. That was the first thing that I ever read in terms of all this sexuality, spirituality. So, and he was explaining like, um, imagine how many sperms are, we are ejaculating at one come. And not all of them are fertilizing sperms, but you can basically give life to a nation with just one ejaculation. So 
And it's a lot of resources when you think about it. And these resources are abundant um, in teenagers. But as we move towards 20s, it starts diminishing like mid 20s. But it, everybody's different, right? But mid 30s is something else is happening, and mid 40s, a little bit. Uh, is diminishing more. And so the Taoist masters, for example, they regulated some suggested ejaculation frequencies. And it starts with like, if you're a teenager or you can do it twice a day, if you're in your 20s, do it once a day, 30s, do it three times, once every three days, 40s, once every five days, something like that. You can just Google that and find what those formulas are. Uh, but why should I restrict my sexuality? You know, like masturbation, especially, you know, like it's a field that I feel authentic. It's a field that, oh, I am a fucking free, authentic man. Oh, I have, I have tons of pleasure. You know, like I'm the king of the world. So why, why to do something that, isn't it better that we need to do it more often? You know, like it's the common sense says that as a teenager boy or when we're 20s, 30s, but this wisdom of the ancient traditions is that if you keep it, if you keep the economy of it, there are tons of benefits. Your aging can slow down and or reverse. Your mental capacity will boost. You can be a genius. And the Indians know about this, or so Brahmachari guys, they would study, study, study until 2025 20, and never come and never have a flirt, masturbation is banned, they become geniuses, uh, but you don't have to follow that way. There's a know-how in Tantra, and that's what I want to talk about tonight, it, which is you can eat your cake and still have it. Um, you can masturbate in the Tantric way, and you still keep that energy. Like the NoFap guys, they talk about when they don't come for two months, six months, whatever, what happens. Uh, I am pro-masturbation, because this is how we learned. Actually, we learned it as solo practice, which is just a, it's not for the sake of masturbation mostly, but it's like um, to have this tantric experience in sex with your partner, you need to first train yourself. And the easiest way to train yourself is when you're alone, when you're solo, because you can control much or less everything. Look, there's, I mean, some psycho, uh, subconscious things maybe you can't control yet, some autonomic things there. So you have to hack them somehow to be a multi-orgasmic man, to have orgasms without ejaculations. So you need to experiment a lot. You need to practice a lot. And solo practice is perfect. Also, when you're ready, you can have the similar experience with a woman. And that's even much more amazing. You know, sex becomes something to achieve God. And there's this famous book of David Data, for example, American Tantra author, finding God through sex, you know, like, so it is possible, um, but there's just, you need to learn how to do it. It's not easy, especially if you're used to the old way. Um, so young, a young person can learn it much faster. An old person, it's much more difficult, but why to learn it? I'll open up the spiritual dimension a little bit more. Uh, the Tibetans call the sperm bodhicitta, okay? So it's not just sperm, it's not just giving life, Therefore, it's full of amazing potent qualities to give life. Uh, but it's also, if it's not wasted, it's your Buddha mind. Bodhicitta means Buddha mind. So uh, Bodhicitta, which means when you have that, when you have your sperm with you, you're less reactive, you're more wise, you're more, you have more willpower, uh, you're more creative, and you are more enlightened, okay? So, and you can experiment with these ideas basically, you know, like just do no fab for a while and don't do no fab for a while. But the tantric way is a little bit more sophisticated. So you need to basically come close to the point of no return in a masturbation and just make it a practice, you know, like not just for the fun of it, not just for the sake of it, make it a practice, focus, isolate yourself, to what you're doing every day 20 minutes or 30 minutes or once every other day or whenever you feel like and start pleasuring yourself and understand how you ejaculate where you ejaculate what happens uh when you ejaculate also 
like what just be aware and develop this awareness in a way that you can actually control this process by using your willpower to chill out a little bit before you come okay so you come become you become a little bit more aware of your sexual life you observe it a little bit like a scientist and then work on it to change it um maybe some of you thinking of what the fuck this guy is talking about how come it's possible to orgasm and ejaculation it is possible because you can ejaculate without orgasm too sometimes does it ever happen to you you can see it in porn sometimes guys ejaculate with almost no pleasure at all because he because he ejaculates too often maybe that's a reason but still in the brain they are uh, triggered by different centers so you can separate them from each other after some time after some certain practice some guys can do it quick more quicker some guys can take longer time but it is possible i've seen it in myself i've seen it in my uh, students and my clients so sooner or later anybody can get there okay it's a little bit like uh, like kung fu you know like it's something serious okay you need to be like dedicate some of your time and energy into this you know like you can't be a kung fu fighter with just thinking about it you know it doesn't happen that way so coming back to the actual practice you masturbate yourself to this close of point of no return then you chill out but before you lose your erection you go up again you tease yourself up again before you cross the point of no return, you come down again so instead of going like a over the hill and just fall down you keep going like with on a valley orgasm in a way okay so of course in the beginning your brain might resist this idea a lot or you can your subconscious can try to take revenge where is my orgasm where is my orgasm but sooner or later your brain rewires itself and you get some more pleasure there are a lot of techniques tricks methods strategies to uh, support this um, so that you can have some orgasmic experiences without uh, ejaculation so during solo the solo practice is the main thing that you do this you know like main uh training that you're having all, all the other things are like karate kid kind of things you know like boring things some of them so yeah and then you just walk out walk out of the masturbation without ejaculation even though even if you don't have an orgasm okay so you're kind of hacking your brain into this new kind of sex experience and then you become empowered because your hormones are triggered especially if you have some pleasure some orgasmic sensations you will have uh, tons of neurochemistry in your brain giving you a lot of satisfaction so you feel better you feel happier you feel less needy when you're with the girls because you pleasure yourself you empower yourself it's a way of empowering and loving yourself okay and then girls feel it somehow i mean i'm sure in the dating world you guys are aware that uh, for example if you're having sex regularly and then you go and approach another woman other woman uh, they will feel somehow that you're not so horny. And if you're very horny, like you didn't have sex for a month or something, and then you go approach the woman, somehow the energy sneaks, seek, uh, leaks, you know? So um, solo practice can help with that. You don't have to have sex. You can have sex with yourself, you know, like turn it into a full experience and don't lose your energy in the end, which magnifies, you know, your magnetic force improves after that. You're more attractive. Like you're a stronger nucleus of the eighth atom. You know, your proton is stronger or you have more protons and you can, more electrons can turn around you. More, if, you're, if you want to have a lot of ladies, this is possible in that way. So that's it. There you go. Yeah, I actually have a question about that. Go it, ahead. Uh, I, I said the same thing to you before. Is that like when you... Like, let's say we are training ourselves to come very fast. Like a lot of guys, like, they just, like, try to come as fast as possible. But then they, when you condition yourself to do that, then you end up coming as fast like that when you when you are with a woman. And then you don't are not able to last uh, as long as you could last in bed. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good point. Um, I mean, on average, men come much faster than women. And that's why we call this premature ejaculation you know? because she's not there yet you need to stay longer and it's i mean it's about time really like you can do your best 
to pleasure her. Okay, do G spot stimulation, give her an amazing oral sex, you know, be very sexy, you know, like turn her on like crazy with your words and everything. Still, it's a matter of time. For some women, it's not. I know some women can have orgasm just like that. Like, just like you, 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 you lick her fingers and she's orgasming already. Some women are like that. But on average, lasting longer uh, is going to help you more on the long game. Yeah, so I don't like yourself. Women, yeah, a lot of women have that idea that, that, that a lot of guys are very selfish in the bedroom. And that's why, like, a lot of times they have doubt of, like, going home with the guy because they're like, oh, I'm not sure if this guy is going to be just like the other guys that just came, like, 10 seconds and that was it. I, di I didn't like that was like the I guess that lack of empathy and uh, you know selflessness towards the woman and give her the experience that she deserves and a lot of guys just like just about me you know and then it up that's why the relationships that don't really last because of that that's a big factor I think that's one of the biggest factors that like relationships a lot of get fucked up because there is a resentment that women build up because the guys are so selfish and they never speak up They just hold that resentment uh, in themselves and never tell their like partner or whatever that they're not, they kind of fake orgasms or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. They try to like, so they don't kind of make the other, the guy feel bad about, about that. So, but deep down they're resentful. Yeah. You mean uh, that uh, because guys are ejaculating earlier than women and then the sex ends, mostly or like i don't know like she feels like incomplete somehow and then she thinks the guy is selfish yeah exactly so that she feels she's not feeling sexually fulfilled and she doesn't feel like there is uh that uh give and take is not always just like the guy just takes 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 you know what i'm saying i know yeah so yeah but there's also the psychological aspect you know like you can uh For example, she's really sexy. She's really turning you on. And you can't help it. You come very quick. It's your first sex, whatever. But if your attitude is that I'm not taking something from you, but you are so, like, honest, you know, like, you're so fucking hot that I just came in one minute, but yeah. I really like you and I want to have sex again and it will be better kind of honesty. And you keep it in the relationship, like, and then you work on yourself to improve that, then... Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah of course. People yeah. change That's, their mind. If you do that, then it's a completely different. It's a completely okay. different context. But I was talking more in general that what guys, what women say about what guys are like in the bedroom in general, like one night stands or even mm -hmm. when they have more longer relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Just your question pops up some new ideas in my mind and different ways of yeah. thinking. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I understand you, what you mean. I'm just telling you the tantric perspective. Yeah, so I guess that uh, now if uh, there's quite a lot of guys in the call, so if you guys have like questions for Fadi, I think it would be a good time to get into like questions. Questions. And yeah, I have a, a couple of questions relating to to this actually. First one is, um, I actually some some years ago when I had my first girlfriend, I instinctively, uh, I think you're talking about edging, right? You mm -hmm. you reach reach a certain uh, point in in um, excitement, and then you just like oh let's chill for a bit, and then recharge and go again and chill for a bit. I used to take like sometimes three hours for me to come for the first time with her, and uh, I remember the orgasms were like Jesus Christ, <laughs> that's what you're <laughs> talking about, right? Like edging yeah. it and releasing, edging, releasing. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's thing... part of what I'm talking about. It's not just that. Uh, let me clarify. Yeah, edging. And if you can, don't come in the end and just walk out of bed as well. Um, and then repeat it again if you can. If you repeat, Like Taoist Master says, if it's nine times like that, you will reach immortality. <laughs> Something yeah, like that. But, uh, I remember. Yeah. So, so you're saying don't come at all? the whole sex or come at yeah. the end after edging a few times look okay Felipe. when you say come the term come uh, is a balloon it called it includes ejaculation and orgasm okay 
So uh-huh. I separate them and I don't use the word come. I, I avoid it as much as I can. And I say ejaculation and orgasm. So okay. yes, you can have orgasms. You can orgasm. And if you can, sometimes it happens, you know, like in some cases when you train yourself, but not ejaculate. And still, if you can, don't ejaculate. But if it happens, what to do? As I said, be honest. Okay, so, so, so basically, basically try to, to edge it, uh, not come and orgasm anyway. That, is that it? Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, one one uh, other question I wanted to shoot at you is, how is it possible that sometimes, like I remember, um, I remember dating this girl, she was a 10, like no doubts about it. And I remember the first time we had sex unprotected, I had the opposite effect. I, I had not premature, but super delayed, like <laughs> took me like four hours to come and I wasn't even edging, like I didn't even come close, you know. I, I was, was wondering that? if you have any, sorry? So, sorry, please complete your question. Yeah, that's, that's it. Like, uh, do you have any, any like insights to it? Why, why, could it, why could it happen? I've never been able to explain it to myself. I need to ask a few questions to first understand the situation. Do you think the reason for that could be that you weren't so much turned on as a kind of surprise? Hmm. No, I was actually. I was really, really excited, but I don't know if I, I was savoring it. And I, and I was like, okay, so don't come close to the edge, <laughs> so you don't shoot, because I was doing unprotected sex with a girl I met two weeks ago. So, uh, yeah. So normally, unprotected sex means more pleasure and difficult to catch a hold of your pleasure levels. Yes. Yes. Uh, not not like not always, but this time it was. Okay, so this was an exception. So and we are trying to find out the the X the factor X, like what created this situation. Were you overly excited, excited, anxious, you know, or excited? I was excited. Maybe a little anxious because yeah. I, I thought at the time she was out of my league. You know. I I okay then I exactly cannot know. You know, like I'm not God or the Einstein of this, but I will tell you my opinion is that um, like we are learning something new all the time, right? About our neurology, our biochemistry, brain chemistry, genes, hormones, and this and that, you know, like, and how they affect each other. And of course, um, like there are factors that relate with ejaculation and orgasm too. So this over anxiousness, released you know you were maybe you, you had more cortisol than normal and it somehow uh, kind of miss um, how to say it in english caused your prostate to misfunction malfunction so your prostate malfunction and couldn't couldn't get that tone special tone to ejaculate and so you were like this kind of blocked in a strange way just a guess yeah okay well, i guess no, no yeah, issues. I, I don't want to hold you up on personal questions. You can, you can keep on. Sometimes we learn a lot through personal questions. You're yeah, welcome. Exactly, Sometimes, yeah. yeah, this can help. Other guys can understand something from this too. Yeah, I think Anthony. Okay, thank you. Question. Uh, we can. Yeah, ask. yeah. So I've been doing NoFap for a while, but Fatih, what are some steps that we can do right now, like to take action? Steps towards what? What do you want? No fab? I think, yeah. Not like no fab only, but like, I think I have some blocked uh, chakras, like my sex chakra is a bit blocked. I don't know if the others uh, can relate with this. I don't know. Well, okay. It's always very personal and sex <laughs> is even super personal. So I need to mm. understand you, Anthony, more. Um, so, but okay, I so- can answer it. General question, but you ask another question too, like uh, what are the steps? Um, yeah. Steps to reach, reach this tantric orgasm, like yep. tantric sex. Yep. Well, uh, it's very hard to simplify, but uh, you need to have energy awareness 
you need to have the willpower, you need to have good blood flow, you need to have a pure body, and you need to practice a lot. Like I would say minimum these five to get mm -hmm. somewhere. Five yeah. like in general or like in the speed? In, in general, the... yeah, in general. Okay. Like if you go into each of them, sorry, like purity is a huge subject, you know, like energy awareness is a huge subject. But uh, they just simplify, you know, like very, very simple. Yeah, I guess you guys can have a call like private after uh, some other time after, uh, you know, in the future, if you yeah, guys want to do that. Yeah, yeah, let me put some advertisements in. Actually, you can read my ebook, which is 220 blog pages, and I yeah, explain yeah. everything, my story. And when you buy it, it's just $19, and five hours plus of my video course comes with that. And I, you know, like we can just share the link. Or you can get coaching from me if you're more serious. But let's go back to Anthony's question. Yeah, it was more about chakra because uh, when mm. I'm out and I interact with girls, you know, um, I can't really feel uh, sexual in my body more, you know. Okay, um, let's not go into chakras because not maybe everybody knows about them. Let's say mm. that you, you mentioned your, your sexual center is blocked. You don't yeah, so it's a bit deeper. Energy. That's why. Yeah. 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 But has it been always like this? Don't mute yourself. I will have a conversation with you. Um, I think so. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 19. 19. Um, okay. This has to be personal. And can I go mm -hmm. on even more personal questions? Yeah, I'm going to be coaching you a little. Are you a virgin? No. Okay, how was your sexual experiences? Were you turned on somehow? Um, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. It depends on the girls, really, because um, mm, yeah. sometimes okay. I lowered my standards, so that's bad. Uh -huh. but, yeah. uh, let's talk about the good ones, okay? Mm -hmm. So the good ones, you had, uh, you did come in the end? Did you ejaculate? Or orgasm yeah yeah okay can you remember that moment right now or that girl it was a bit fast what uh, <laughs> what what yeah goes a bit fast i don't i don't get horny that much now when i'm uh, no like always during the intercourse okay but uh, you cannot have an orgasm <laughs> if you don't have some sexual energy okay mm. you know you you could have yeah. another uh malfunction you know like you could have an erectual dysfunction but mm -hmm. you can have an erection so you can penetrate her so you can have an orgasm right so yeah um that's very really interesting are you a fit guy like are you doing some training you have yep, I work out. Mm -hmm. you work out you work out Okay, mm -hmm. that's why so, I asked about chakra. It's a bit more personal, yeah. but we can go on to the other questions. If you want. So I'm not going to um, be suspicious a lot about your testosterone levels, but check them too. And there are a lot of things you can do naturally improve your testosterone. Okay, for example, do testicle massages. You know, like grab your balls like this and pull them. Of course, don't hurt yourself too much. Like I can even do it during sex sometimes. Press them as another massage and tap them as a third massage. Especially if it's summer day, take a huge ice block, okay, something like this, and take it and massage your testicles for five, 10 minutes every day. And then see if you're feeling more horny. You know, like there are tons of things. Take some ashwagandha, ginseng, uh, tonkat ali, yep. afrodi, you know, like my brother Farhan, he's he developed an amazing afrodi formula for men called afrodi, you know, like. Um, you can get this by 10% off if you want. I can give you a link. But I think, personally talking to you, you have some deeper issue. And I would like, I mean, either you need to go a therapist, like a proper sex textual therapist. I'm a coach, okay? I'm a sex coach. Uh, I can also help with these issues, but better if you go to a sex therapist and resolve something because it sounds like you have some subconscious issue there, some fear based on your 
childhood or teenager life, some fetish issue or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Nice to meet you, Anthony. Yeah. So I think Philip has a question. Maybe Philip, you can you wrote you wrote in the in the comments. But in the Your voice is. Oh yeah. Not yeah. so good. So no, no, it's good. Now good. No. Now good. Now good. Not good. Yeah. Now good. Ah, uh, now good. Okay, now good. <laughs> so yeah, Philip, let's see if your mic. Uh, it's functioning. Well, if if you can't speak, I can ask uh, ask the question for you, I guess. So yeah, I guess I can ask the question. So he said you talked as pra to practice alone and awareness. Is there one or two techniques that are most effective that you recommend to avoid ejaculation? Uh, can you uh, repeat the second part of the question? Can yeah. you recommend two techniques to... Yeah, two techniques that are the most effective to avoid ejaculation. Okay, again, when I work personally for each person, this can dif differentiate. Some people have some... Um, mm -hmm. Muscle, muscle. Okay, let's go through muscles because for most people, this, these are will be going to be helpful. Two techniques. I have so many techniques, you know, like, okay, one of them is, let's call it pelvic floor empowerment. Okay, you need to have strong pelvic floor muscles. There's not just one technique, but let's say just minimum two techniques that you need to try there, uh, practice there. One of them is the PC muscle pull-up or the Kegel, man Kegels, you know, you just squeeze your perineum upwards and your perineum, perineum is between your balls and your anus. So you, it's like the, exactly the um, foundation of your torso. You just lift it up in certain ways and you fatigue that muscle. And then two days later, you just do it again. You know, do it every other day or every day so strengthen those muscles and then there is two uh, muscles that are helping the penis to erect and stay erect and look even higher and you gotta strengthen those muscles too and this is this techniques have been uh practiced um by Taoist masters you know like ancient traditions so this is the th first technique okay <laughs> which I have two techniques. So you lift your penis up and you fatigue those muscles. And there are certain ways to work with them. There's even a technology called private gym. You can just uh, go online and get some weights that you put on your dick. So it's even like you go to a gym, what you do to improve your muscles, you put on more weights, right? So here you can also put on some more weights. Uh, hopefully in the future, there will be more technologies coming up and you will not need uh, weights and there will be some elastic bands like the resistance, resistance bands, because personally, I believe resistance bands are more effective way to build muscles better than weighting lifts. Okay, let's close this parenthesis. So the second technique, I mean, it's very difficult for me to choose because it depends for the person. Some people need to be able to move the energy upwards for those people, but it's also majority of the guys need to do this somehow. There's a very strong uh, yoga technique called Udhyana Bandha, okay? Uh, if you do the Udhyana Bandha effectively and well, you move the energy upwards and it's really changing a lot of things. If you have a lot of sexual energy, you flush that energy upwards so you can keep going for a while. That's one thing. Or the other thing would be the uh, sharpening the knife technique. Sharpening the knife technique where you take your, uh, these two fingers like that. Okay, let's do it like this. And you hold your penis. Okay. I have, a, I have a dildo here, so I can show you just here. So you hold the penis and you just slide up. Okay, there's no, uh, uh, what's it called? I, I cannot glide this easily. So, so you just do it like that, okay? It, it can be faster. So you open up and you hold from the fold to base and then you just slide it up. So you massage towards outside. And you do it 50 times or 100 times, you know, like don't, don't do, do the glands. Like there are different vari variations. Some people do the glands as well. 
like the tip of the penis as well. Some people stop just at the beginning of it uh, because when you go to the glands, it can trigger ejaculation if you are very aroused. So this technique can help very much because what this technique does is that um, more blood flow, more uh, firmness of erection, and this synthesizes you a little bit. Philip, do you feel like the... Is okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah that's good. good. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I said two because, because there's so many. Of them. Like, it's it's like, like, I know it's... No, sorry, Philip. The echo continues. Can you type your question or your response, please? Yeah, you're echoing, Philip. Hmm. Yeah, he said thanks. You're welcome. So, yeah, any anyone else uh, wants to? I guess we have to, you uh, know, what in a bit move forward, but. Anyone else wants to ask one more question? I guess that we can. I have a question, uh, Fatih. Go ahead, Philip. Oh, David. Oh, yeah, or Francisco. Francisco, yeah. Was, he can go first. Oh, okay, Francisco, yeah, Francisco. Uh, ask My name me. is Francisco. I think somebody just muted me. Um, uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you very much for your presentation. I thought it was very, very uh, interesting and uh, enlightening. Um, well, basically, you probably can answer these questions very easily as with your experience, but it's, I guess, if you get a chronic injury, then your testosterone levels go down, which means your sex drive goes down. So the result, I, I'm just saying this because I, I stopped uh, masturbating in 2018. And um, since then I've masturbated only twice uh, in the last uh, two years. And, um, and uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have, I don't feel any problem, you know? I mean, of course I'm not, um, I'm basically trying to fix my chronic injury so that I, you know, heal it so that I, my testosterone goes back up. Right. So, um, but yeah, but I feel I, it's funny. I was hearing you talk and I feel exactly those things you were saying about, I feel much more focused and, uh, uh it's, it, it's definitely something that has, um, given me more, uh, powers of concentration and more, it freed up my mental energy to not be like so focused on sex all the time, you know. Uh, I also got rid of all the all the photos I had of naked girls. I mean, I only have photos of naked girls that I've had sex with, basically, and I don't and some videos also, but I don't have any porn, nothing, you know, nothing like that. Um, but the question I have is the following: I've noticed something because last year I did a surgery. I had to do. Um, the surgery I did uh, um, when they take away the the part the top part of the dick, you know, the, um, uh, the circumcision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. I, I I will relieve a little bit because when you say they took the top part of the penis, I was thinking something more dramatic. But you're just talking <laughs> about the foreskin. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, no. I, I don't I don't mean they cut my head off. No. <laughs> okay, so I'm yes. circumcised too. I know how it feels. I was 11 years old in a hospital. I was circumcised, so I know what you're talking about. Uh, Fatih, if I if I didn't have the my head anymore, I don't think I would be in this video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've killed myself already. No, but listen, I uh, so I did the circumcision, and um, it's funny, man. I I've I haven't had a lot of sex since then. I just a few times, but. I, I almost don't feel anything like I can I can probably now go for I haven't tested it but you know uh, it seems like the fact that I have less um, uh, sensitivity on the tip of my penis uh, makes it easier probably to if I want to if I really make an effort uh, maybe okay I Francisco uh, can I interrupt you one second I need to ask a few questions to clarify some things First, you mentioned a chronic injury. What is that, please? Can you be vulnerable enough to share it with us? And it's, I'm not embarrassed about it at all. It's, I'm, I'm healing it as we speak, but it's, I have a, mm -hmm. basically a herniated disc, a lower okay. back. Okay, yeah. 
Well, that's that's very interesting because uh, about a week ago I had an MRI and I just on my birthday one week from now I also learned I had a herniated, herniated disc, first time in my life. I mean, well, I can help you heal your herniated disc if you want. And yeah, I mean, for the if I do my practice well, I don't even feel the pain, but I need to constantly take care of myself. Okay, we'll talk about it later. So this was two years ago. No, this and was. Then, this was one my I, my injured it in 2015 actually but six uh, years ago okay yeah I guess then, guys, let's let's make it quick you know so we can move on yeah i know <laughs> francisco let me understand it so yeah. you got circumcised and this doesn't I, have i, I was just saying I think it's easier i think it's easier um to maybe make follow this path to tantric sex and to like you said to immortality to uh not like come when you want and like you uh, orgasm without ejaculating and so on if you have less sensitivity on the tip of the penis i'm not telling other guys to do that as well i'm just saying it's why uh, did you get circumcised just out of curiosity because i got a std uh, actually no i i got an std and then i had sex with another girl and then i uh, had some kind of bacterial problem on my on my penis and okay uh, yeah circumcised penises are easier to take the hygiene care of okay and you did yeah. much or less for that reason. Okay, now it's more clear. Um, uh, yeah, you might be going through something. I mean, yeah, the hernia can affect your right, your hormone system, your energy system, everything. Your but this doesn't mean you cannot do shit. One of my uh, biggest enthusiastic enthusiasts, like my uh, role models in this life, is a yogi who is 100 years old today. He's a Turkish man, Yogi Kazım, 100 years old today. He Half of his inner organs are taken out because of cancer. His two or three vertebras are taken out after a traffic accident. He's super fit. He looks like 40 years old. He's super cool. Okay. So no excuses. You can do anything, anytime, anywhere. Sky is the limit. On your mind limits you. Okay. This is the first thing I need to tell you about that. Again, with the circumcision. I was sometimes thinking, oh, I'm disadvantaged, blah, 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 because of this, because of that. The foreskin is good. I want to grow my foreskin. Why does it take my foreskin away from me? I was angry, blah, blah. Still, I can have a foreskin maybe in the future, and I'm totally fine without it right now, because what matters is something very else. Some people are also stuck with their size of their penis, right? You know, like they don't feel satisfied. And most of these guys, they're over the average already. And it doesn't really matter so much in Tantra. You can make your dick one meter tall by your energetic force. You can orgasm a woman without even moving, you know? If there is a will, there is a way. So, but you ask this question and um, about circumcision, what happens is that your skin, glass skin becomes desensitized, especially in the first years, I think. You need to research this. Um, because most people who get circumcised are before they're a teenager. Uh, it's very rare that some adult person goes through. I, I don't know about US, but in Islam and Jewish cultures. So um, what happens there is that your skin develops layer over layer to protect itself from this outside stimulation, which is not used to before when the foreskin was there. So in this case, some desensitivity, desensitivity I couldn't say the word, you can, understand what i mean so it becomes dissensible thank you my english is not my native language so um yeah so you're going through something like that but still if there's a will there's a way do you want to have an active sex life i'm asking you do i want to have is that a rhetorical question i think everybody wants to have an active sex life no i don't know i need to ask you look right now i'm going to be completely honest with you right now um, I, my highest priority is to reach a, a, a situation of zero pain, like all the time. You understand? Okay. If, if I can reach a situation of zero pain all the time, and I have to sacrifice having sex with girls while I do that, because of course having sex means I have to uh, make positions and movements with my back, which will give me pain. Then I would rather do that while I reach the zero pain and then go back to, you know, uh, trying to have sex with lots of girls if that makes sense i hear you i hear you i hear you so you have your priorities you have an action plan i have an action plan yeah perfect so you just be patient brother and just keep applying your plan and at some point 
you will come to a stage where you could take more help from me and then I will step in but with pleasure and we can discuss about and I can teach you, I can coach you in the right way. Definitely, man. Looking forward. And I can help you also, huh? With your uh with yeah, your sure. Let's stay in touch after the master class. Okay, man. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Cool. Cool. So let's let's get I guess this is gonna be the last question. David uh can I wait, wait. I need I need a very quick look. Uh, yeah, no daughter. worries, no worries, no worries. So let's wait a second. Yeah, guys, uh, make sure that the questions that you make, try to make it as relevant. Okay, as I'm ready to possible. answer yeah. one more question. Oh, so uh, I basically have like a, I can tell my experience and it's more like a, just want to share about it. Uh, I've been practicing semen retention for like the past, uh, maybe two years almost or something like that on and off and like no fap as well in the last year more specifically and I've learned like to have an orgasm without ejaculation and with the method when you like hold your corneum I cannot oh. do it without the hand but I can do it with myself that, te that technique is not recommended it's even dangerous uh it's 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 really bad technique even the writers of the book they admitted that they would take this technique off if they can okay so orgasm without education is not this uh force retention with three fingers pressing on the perineum it's called one million dollar point by Montag Chia. but my tantra master says that's the five cents point and it has reasons um, so don't force your perineum because you can damage your genitalia. Okay. We do something completely else in my, in what I'm teaching in our tradition. All right. And, uh, I just wanted to say what I understood that even though I'm, I'm not like masturbating anymore for like, for okay. Very early, and okay. the thing I understood is even though I'm not releasing semen, I still, when I, with the masturbation thing, I still feel that I have an energy loss. And even though it's pleasurable. Yeah. That's energy. what happens also. True. When you do that technique, you also lose your energy. You cannot, the only thing it's supposed, why it's a five cents point. What happens is that you lose your erection. You come, your prostate spasms like crazy. You cannot continue the erection. The I only can. thing is that, what? I don't lose the erection. It's just, it's an orgasm without the ejaculation and the erection. No, ejaculation is there. That's called retrograde ejaculation. You, okay. When I say about non-ejaculation, I'm talking about the prostate gland, okay? So this this is a technical detail. Sorry, Diogo, I have to, this cannot be quick answer. No worries. Um, can, so the, yeah. the, the prostate keeps the sperm during when you're aroused, okay? So when you ejaculate, the prostate poof, orgasms, uh, shoots the uh, sperm out, okay, with the semen. So what you do, you press, it's still doing that, and you press it backwards, okay? You kind of, you cannot go out, fuck you, you're gonna go back, you know, like forceful retention, this is called. So what happens, some of that sperm goes back to bladder, because the bladder entry is just above the prostate entry. So instead of they go back to prostate, most of it goes back to bladder, your urinary bladder, and they die. So you lose that energy, you lose the bodhicitta. The way we do it, when you don't do that uh, spasm and ejaculation from the prostate, they, the sperms go back to testicles and they keep living in your body. And when they die, they are recycled. This is a complete different way. And you, uh, you can continue the sex because when you have that uh, orgasm without ejaculation, probably you cannot continue the sex, right? Uh, for me, I can. I don't lose the erection. But I was wondering, like, does... I always thought you just hold the prostate and the, it happens, the semen gets, like, recycled again. And I've, like, actually haven't tried it in having sex but that's what I noticed with the masturbation thing and I also am familiar with Mantak Chia work and other like these topics I just okay. noticed myself that even though I'm retaining the semen 
having the orgasm and I don't lose the erection, I could do it again. Okay. If I feel okay, that. I will. So this is your question? This is your question? Yeah, I you just wanna... want to share okay. and hear your opinion yeah. about this. So, yeah, okay. I mean, maybe you're having a very exclusive special situation, but generally 99% of the guys, when we do this technique, um, all hormonal structure is changing. You know, the neurochemistry and everything is changing and your penis becomes super sensitized and you cannot continue penetration. And normally you would lose the erection as well, but somehow um, your cases may be different. Uh, but even though the writer of that book, uh, Cultivating Male Sexual Energy, co-authored uh, Mantak Chia, his name is Michael Wynn. And you can find online today even in my book, also I talk about this subject, Michael Wynn had a public announcement that he doesn't think that this technique is safe uh, and he would take it off from the book if you could. So he's telling his students, don't, to, don't to apply this technique ever because you, it can really damage you, okay? So this is the advice from the co-author of that book. Um, it's up to you to use it or not. I have a quick question. Like, yeah. is, if... Is it not the same when you like contract the prostate with the muscle? Is it different than you just contracting from the outside? Prostate, the prostate itself is a muscular structure. Okay, so uh, you don't on, you don't only use muscle to stop the prostate from ejaculation. You use the prostate itself. The prostate is under control, and it doesn't go through this spasmic uh, ejaculation of the sperm. It can still vibrate in a different way. So you can have a prosthetic orgasm even without ejaculation, but you don't use, it's hands-free. <laughs> yeah, that, and, that's what I mean. Isn't it the same? Like contracting the prostate from the, with the muscle pulling it up and using the hand, it's not the same. Or I'm not, I'm going to repeat what I said. It's not only the muscular contraction that stops the ejaculation. Okay. It's, um, like you just control it from inside. You don't press it from outside, even though it's a muscle. I mean, those muscles, whole muscle structure, the PC muscles, they're connected with the prostate and they keep everything under control. Because you can lose the sperm and it can go to the bladder. You know, like maybe your biological structure doesn't let it happen in that way. But I know from myself, if I, I did it, I try, of course, I'm talking about something I practiced. If I press this like very strongly, this perineum point with three fingers, yes, no sperm comes from my dick. That's true. So it's like a dry orgasm, but I lose my power. I cannot continue uh, polarizing my wife, or my partner in the same way I can. And I heard it from many different people. And even uh, my friend, who is also a very experienced tantra, teach, uh, tantra coach for guys, who has on Facebook a group of 15,000 people or something, like a huge group he has. And on his blog, he released one post about only about this technique, that why it should be avoided. Yeah, okay. I guess, I guess we can... Thank yeah. you for You're welcome. Cool, man. Thank you for the question. So You're yeah, welcome. I guess we can move on. Uh, well, you can uh, maybe share the, the screen now. Thank you for Fatif. Thank you for really. You're welcome. Was a really thanks good. Thanks for thanks for invitation.